here's a tricky example using integration by parts. And I always like to wrap up our examples of integration by parts using this one because it is a little bit quirky and it uses a somewhat unusual setup. But there are a few examples that you'll see in the homework that look like this. And it's really a very specific form where you have the product of an exponential and a sine or cosine function that fits this pattern. But I want you to see it at least once um, just because it's kind of fun and interesting to do. And also you may run across one of these somewhere. So it starts out just like all the others and it looks fairly unremarkable. We have two functions e to the x and sine of x. And if we think through Lipti, we have a trig function sine of x and we have a exponential function e to the x. So the first one in the list sine of x will define as u and the second one e to the x will let be dv along with dx. So far so good, nothing complicated happening. We can find du, that's the cosine of x. We can find v, that's e to the x. And again, after doing a couple of these examples, that part is all very familiar, nothing unusual yet. Okay, so let's apply the integration by parts formula where we have the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral v du. So in our example, that would be the integral of e to the x times sine of x dx. Equals u times v, that would be e to the x times sine of x. Minus the integral of v du. So that would be e to the x cosine of x <clears throat> dx. And this is where things start to look interesting. Because usually we start with a complicated integral here, and then we end up with a simpler integral here. Now we haven't gotten any worse, but it also hasn't gotten any better. We still have e to the x times now cosine of x, but it's a very similar setup, so it hasn't really simplified at all. Okay, but we've seen things like this before where we had to use integration by parts twice, so let's try that. Let's try using integration by parts again in hopes that maybe this time things will simplify. So again, we have e to the x times a trig function, so we'll let u equal the trig function. We'll let dv equal the exponential function. And then we'll calculate du and v like we've always done du by differentiating u and v by integrating dv. So now we've still got the integral of e to the x times sine of x dx. Starts out with e to the x times sine of x minus, and then in brackets we're going to put the substituted integration by parts formula for this one. So that would be uv in this new u and v. So e to the x times cosine of x minus the integral of v du. So that would be e to the x times negative sine of x. So that turns into a positive dx. And then let's distribute that negative sign. Okay, so it still hasn't gotten any better, and in fact, we're all the way back to where we started. So things seem kind of hopeless now. We not only haven't gotten any better, but we've got some extra stuff, and then we've gotten all the way back to the first integral we started with. So if we tried this again, we would just start cycling forever and ever and ever. Okay, so how can we do this? Well, we can get creative. And the tricky part here is we say, okay, this is what we would like to calculate. This is some value. 
we have the same thing over here. While we don't know what it is, we could just call it a variable. So let's say we call this, we need a new variable name for it. Let's call it y. And we can solve this equation for y, just like we would solve any algebraic equation that you're used to. That's the tricky part on this one. If you notice this cycling happening to the point that the same integral shows up on the right as the one you started with, you can actually solve for it. We can add this to both sides. And then we'll have two times that integral. equals e to the x sine of x minus e to the x cosine of x. And then to solve for this, we just divide both sides by 2. So the answer to our question is 1 half e to the x sine of x minus 1 half e to the x cosine of x. And of course we need a plus c just to be consistent. So it's a little tricky, a little quirky but it shows up every once in a while and specifically it happens when you have the product of an exponential and a trig function where both of them start to cycle when you do u and du or dv and v. So I wanted to show you that one. You'll see a couple of these on the homework and every once in a while they show up. But it's kind of interesting to see that. At the end of these notes I'm going to put some more examples for integration by parts. You should go through and work them all out. I'll have the answers written after that on the following page, but go through and work those out and make sure that you can do those. And with any questions, uh, just contact me and I will help you out.